Alright, welcome back. Now, in the previous video, we set up the wind sound effect, and Lee had mentioned that it just kind of felt like something was missing. Well, yeah, unless these trees are made out of concrete, <laughs> we got a problem. They should be moving with as much wind as we've got. That's right, we need to have a little bit of ambient motion here. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to set up, but there are a few steps to the process. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in a game object whose sole purpose is to blow some wind through our scene, and that is a wind zone. Now I'm going to create this by going into the hierarchy view on the left hand side, lower corner of the screen. We'll go under the little create drop down and choose wind zone. And that was easy. Technically we now have wind. It's already here. Nice. The only problem though is that if we hit play, we don't see any of this. You lied to me. Well, no, no, no. I didn't lie to you. The wind is there. The problem is that the trees aren't listening to it. Oh, okay. The trees haven't been told to do anything about the wind. So However, the trees have ears? Yeah, it's, it's the trees' fault, really. Oh, okay. Now, if we uh, take a look at the wind zone object, we have some properties here uh, that tell us the wind main. This is the actual amount of force the wind has, how much turbulence. We're going to find that these settings, by default, are a little bit high. But what I want to do is with the wind zone selected here in the hierarchy view, I'm going to come up to my viewport and tap the F key, and that'll fly us over to the game object itself. Well, you didn't lie, we do have wind. Say again? I said you didn't lie, we have wind right there. We do, and that's exactly what it looks like. Now, the object has this little gizmo that tells you which way the wind is pointing. If you recall, earlier on when we were setting up our snow, we gave our snow a little bit of velocity in the x-axis. So it would stand to reason if we took our wind object and we gave it some rotation to point it down the x-axis. And you can always look up here to your little scene gizmo in the upper right-hand corner to remember which way that is. So we need to rotate it 90 degrees in y. Yeah, it would be awkward to have the snow blowing one way and trees going a different way. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be exact. We just have to get it relatively close. So, and if you, of course, you could just punch in 90 degrees up here in Y if you really felt like it. Now, I'm going to go back to the flame here inside the hierarchy view, and then in the viewport, tap F, and that'll just fly us back to where we were, essentially. Now, again, we've got our wind. It's pointed in the right direction, but the trees aren't listening. And we fix that by selecting our terrain and going under the paint trees tool, because now we have to edit these trees. We literally have to tell each type of tree we have in our scene, hey, I want you to listen out for wind. So with our type A or Scott's Pine type A tree selected, we'll click on the Edit Trees button and come down to Edit Tree. If we take a look in the Edit Tree window, we only have two properties. One is the type of tree we're using, and that's already taken care of, and then we have Bend Factor. This is how much, how, what percentage of the wind we're going to listen to, basically. So if we take the Bend Factor and just set it up to 1, the tree's already jumped a little bit uh, in the X direction. Now. This is just personal preference, and you can really go about this either way. Uh, I like setting the bend factor to one across all trees, uh, as long as a, as long as that makes sense. I mean, if they're all the same type of uh, of plant, right? You can make accommodations if you have like a giant sequoia tree that's going to be a, a lot more resistant to wind bending. Right. You can dial this down so that one particular species of tree doesn't bend as much as, say, a willow tree would. Right, but what I don't like to do is to try to tweak all of the bending at the, the tree level if I don't have to. It's nice to start everything out at a value of 1 and then try to tweak your wind where it needs to be, and then where you see a plant that needs to bend a little more or a little less, then go in and edit things from there. Right, that, start with a coarse uh, level of adjustment and work your way to finer and finer as you progress. That's right. So we'll go ahead and click Apply. And then I'm going to grab my Scott's Pine Type B, click Edit Trees, grab the Edit Trees out of the menu, and once again set the bend factor here to 1 as well, and click Apply. Now, if we hit Play and take a look inside our game, the trees are indeed blowing around. And we have our wind. So actually, things are going pretty well. It's just the wind seems a little bit severe in terms of what the trees are doing. If I visually see the trees moving that much, I feel like the snow should really be blowing around a lot more, a lot more. Uh, There's a lot of turbulence turbulently. In. Yeah, yeah. We need more turbulence in the snow, and I don't want to tweak the snow. So instead, what we're going to do is tone down our wind zone. So let's select the wind zone, and I'll take wind main, and we're going to. for fun. Can we uh, bump it up to say five? Make it even more apparent? Oh, sure. Absolutely. That's down the wind turbulence, though, but well, crank here, up the main wind. What I'll do is I'll get us to look up at the trees, and then I'm going to right-click up here in the title bar. And the only reason I right-clicked is just to pull focus away from the viewport, because now I can come over here to the inspector, and I can change all the properties I want on the wind and just see the, the response. So if we take wind main and set it up to, like, you know, 10, 
Oh yeah, that's a definitely uh, a lot of wind. Yeah, now we're blowing all the trees down. In fact, it's like you really kind of want to hear them start to snap and start flying through the air, and then you know cows to start flying by. That's sort of thing. But uh, it, it does point out where you want to match your wind to your snow. That's right. So we're going to pull this way down to point two, and we'll give that a second for the trees to kind of fall back into place because it's not an instantaneous thing. And then we're going to take our wind turbulence, which is also a little bit on the high side. Now, I just want to point two, not point oh two. And we'll take our wind turbulence and set that to point two as well. And that really slows down the, uh, the rapidity of our flutter there. And that's a pretty good setting, but what's the problem? We tweak this in play mode. Oh, yeah. So as soon as I stop playing, oh, we, we lose those it. settings. So it's a good way to experiment and figure out what settings are going to work for you. And then when you're finished, just make sure you kept track of what they were so that you can say point two, tab, point two, enter. And now you know you're good to go. So when you hit play, we have our wind sound effect. We have our trees blowing in the wind, a little bit of ambient motion kind of helping things out. And there we are. The only thing I would do to kind of close out this whole aspect of the design process is I would go back to my first person controller and let's jump back down to the character motor and let's take our max forward speed and set this back to something a little more reasonable. Oh, no more hovercraft? No more hovercraft. I mean, they were, I believe they were at six, six down the board but originally, so let's just set those all back down to six and then we'll hit play and now we no longer feel like we're screaming through the level. Which is good. It, may, it gives the, the level its proper sense of scale once again. And there we are. In terms of the visual aspect, in terms of the, the sound setup, we've got pretty much everything that I wanted to add in. And I believe that's going to wrap things up for this video. Did you have anything else you want to throw in? Not for this video. All right. So uh, we will see you in the next video where we will take a look at establishing light mapping for this level.